When it comes to being a well-rounded composer, one aspect of this craft is often overlooked nowadays, this being the ability to write music cleanly and coherently with pen and paper. In my case, writing music happens heavily at the piano, and I often write those ideas down on paper before subsequently taking them to the computer to organize them in my notation software. Half the work I do is at the piano with manuscript paper and the other half is at the computer. I still find the connection with pen and paper incredibly important for composers, which is why I'd like to lay out a few beginner's tips which might very well improve the appearance of your handwritten music. Even if you aren't a composer, these tips might very well help those of you who are studying music theory as part of their music studies, as the overall appearance of the theory exercises you have to complete might also benefit from employing these tips. First, let's start with what kind of manuscript paper I'd recommend. In my opinion, the best kind of manuscript paper to compose or sketch out ideas on has 12 staves. So why 12 instead of, say, 8 or 10? This has to do with how you can divide up the number 12. First, let's say you want to write for piano or for a duet. You can divide 12 staves into 6 groups of 2. If you want to write for a trio, you can divide the page into 4 groups of 3. And if you want to write for a quartet, you can divide the staves into 3 groups of 4. And finally, if you want to write for a sextet, two groups of six staves. Twelve staves just gives you the most possibilities when composing or even completing theory exercises, and divides nicely into many of the basic ensemble configurations. Even when sketching out an orchestration to a piece where there are more instruments than twelve, twelve staves still gives you almost all the space and possible divisions you need to group the necessary sections together. Next is how you set up your notation paper before you write. I always find it really important to set up a clear division of bar lines before I start writing. You can space the measures according to how dense the music you are writing is, for example if you are writing in 4 quarter time with lots of 16th and 32nd notes, obviously you want to give yourself enough space. Likewise, if you are writing a chorale with a bunch of half notes and the same time signature, then you can space the measures closer together. What this does is enable what you write to be clear and easy to read, not just for others but also for yourself. This gives your work process an almost architecture or blueprint-like structure, as your bar lines create a nice frame to fill in as you write music or work on theory exercises. Besides just a normal notebook with 12 stave manuscript paper, I would also recommend a pocket music notebook for when you are traveling or out and about. I personally use the small notation paper pocket notebooks from Moleskin, but these have become almost impossible to find in stores. However, you can still order them online. The reason I like these music sketchbooks from Moleskin is due to their durability. You will end up having one of these sketchbooks for years, and they need to be made well enough to travel with and be bound well enough as to not fall apart after a year of heavy use. There might be other companies that produce something similar, but I can't seem to find any of a similar quality. As per the writing instrument you should use, I was once recommended to use a calligraphy pen, and while this with practice gives you the best looking handwritten music, I found it to be far too time consuming when sketching out ideas, plus the inability to correct any errors without using whiteout can at times be frustrating. I eventually switched to pencil for a while, but when writing in a notebook, the graphite smears in between pages after a while, and the writing, no matter how tidy it initially might have been, can become illegible. This led me to finally opt for erasable ballpoint pens, which I highly recommend to any composer, and I've been using them for years. My personal choice at the moment are the Pilot Friction erasable pens with 0.5mm tips. They're cheap, easy to find, come in several colors, and glide smoothly enough on paper to make writing fairly easy. The Pilot Friction pens also come with 0.7mm tips, and while these are also usable, I find the lines it produces a tad too chunky and roundish for my taste, and they run out of ink faster. When it comes to writing notes on a stave, I think one thing to keep in mind is how best to write note heads. While it might be easy to create filled in note heads when writing note values beyond quarter notes, I do notice people struggle making clean, legible, empty note heads such as half notes. A lot of people try to draw the note head circle in one stroke, but this can often lead to note heads that are sloppy and not clearly where they should be, which makes determining the correct note difficult for anyone reading the music, which includes yourself if you were to try deciphering what you wrote a while after you had written it. Drawing clean and exact circles is difficult at any size, so I'd like to recommend a technique that requires two pen strokes. First draw a semicircle to represent one half of your note head, then complete the semicircle by drawing the second half of the circle. By dividing the note head into two semicircle strokes, you can quickly and more exactly write empty note heads. 
I picked up this way of writing noteheads from calligraphy, where it's ill-advised to draw a circle with one stroke due to the flat orientation of the pen tip. Since then, it's become a habit, and I find it a better technique even when using a ballpoint pen. Lastly for now, note spacing is crucial, so when writing within a measure, make sure your notes are spaced evenly according to the time signature and beats of the measure. One way of doing this is writing the note heads before you draw their stems, which is my personal method. This way your focus is on the pulse of the measure and not on anything else. Once you've written and spaced your note heads, adding stems and accidentals is a piece of cake and the end result is cleaner. This along with drawing bar lines before you write your music helps create the cleanest handwritten music possible. And don't forget the direction of your stems. After you reach the middle line of your stage, the stems go down. I hope these few tips and recommendations will help you going forward, and if you have your own personal ways of doing things you find to be better, please share in the comment section. I'd be fascinated to hear about it.